Hey fellow babies, welcome back to the Pactor Factor on Sifted.net. I uh, hope you're enjoying it on Sifted.net, that means you're a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber watching it on YouTube, we get it, we welcome you, we appreciate your patronage, but we really could use members on Sifted. You get it a week early, you get a lot of premium content for your $50 annually, not expensive, and we really could use it to keep bringing the, you know, this quality content to you. Um, let me just talk about one of my predictions from last year. I predicted that uh, Rockstar's next game, and I, I'm sure I said this at the beginning of our series so a year ago, um, I said Rockstar's next game would be Midnight Club. That's because I couldn't conceive that Rockstar would go 2014, 2015, 2016, and not produce a single game. I was convinced that they were bringing a game out this year, 2016, and that it would not be Red Dead. So I got that half right, it wasn't Red Dead. What I didn't realize was they wouldn't bring a game out. Um, I thought Midnight Club was due because it last came out in 09. Now we're gonna roll to 2017 and still no Midnight Club. So it better be damn good by the time it rolls out in 2018 because that's nine years in development for a racing game, wow. Uh, in any case, I, my prediction was based on Rockstar getting back on an annual game cadence, and they're not there yet. Uh, again, GTA in 13, GTA in 14, GTA in 15, GTA in 16, and then Red Dead. So I thought that they used to do a game a year. You guys remember those good old days? Our first question this week from Sifted from Vin Hill. If the Nintendo Switch can't handle direct ports from PS4 and Xbox One without developers having to do extra work, what are the console's chances of success? Um, there's no such thing as a direct port without developers having to do extra work. I mean, the only way that developers won't have to do extra work is if they use exactly the same language. So if they build it on kind of a PC platform the way the Xbox One is set up, if they build it in Windows, then there won't be a direct, you know, you can do a direct port. They're not building a new Windows. I have no idea what they're doing, but they're Nintendo. It won't be on Windows. And they're not gonna use Sony's PS4 platform, which is a PC-based platform. It won't be that either. It's gonna be Nintendo's platform. I've actually heard from developers that Nintendo is the easiest of the three to, to develop for. Um, the issue is going to be processing power. If the processor is a lot slower and it doesn't use the same, you know, configuration of cores and it doesn't have the same graphics capability, they have to do something different. And so the question is, dumb it down or bottom up, build a brand new game. The answer to your question is, if the extra work entails building a bottom up brand new game, no, it will not have third party support, it won't last and the console cannot succeed. Um, you saw the lineup, I don't even remember how many, 30 publishers are supporting the Nintendo Switch. It was a big number. I mean, I think well, it had EA on there and it had Ubisoft on there, it had Take-Two. I think, I don't think, did it have Activision? It might have had Activision on there. Yeah. So it had, it had everybody that you would care about. It had a bunch of Japanese developers, but it had Warner Brothers. I mean, it had everybody on there. So the question is, are they supporting it with NBA 2K8? Or are they supporting it with, you know, FIFA 18? Like, that matters. So I don't know the answer. And it's not gonna have FIFA 18 unless that port, as you said, doesn't involve a lot of extra work. If it can be ported at all for a reasonable cost, five million bucks, the publishers will do it. If it's a bottom-up build for 40 million bucks, they will not. So that's the open question. I don't know. Um, you can't spend 40 million bucks on a game if you think you're gonna sell a million units. It's just not worth it. You can spend five million bucks on a game if you think you're gonna sell a million units, totally worth it. So the best way to think about that is when you pay 60 bucks at retail for a game, the, the publisher gets 48 and they pay the console manufacturer 12. So they get 36 bucks. If it costs them $40 million in development cost to get 40 million dollars, I'm sorry, to, to sell 1 million units to get 36 million, do the math, it's a profit deal. They, they spend 40, they get 36. Let's forget marketing, overhead, any other cost. Bad idea, they won't do it. Another question from Sifted from Deus Trinitas. Many players are getting older. Well, all players are getting older, dude. It's like, you, you, we can't help it. In fact, 
you're older now than when I first started reading this question, um, and have slower reflexes, yeah, no shit, um, less hand-eye coordination, no shit, and other issues. Will we see future games made with older players in mind, or will the 18 to 34 demographic continue to be the target? All this hand-eye reflex stuff only matters for multiplayer. It doesn't matter single player, because you can dumb the game down. You can play it on ridiculously easy level. Where I think this ageism that you're talking about, where us old guys are just screwed, uh, where that really kicks in is esports. So games that are built for esports, and I would say Overwatch is that game. Um, Overwatch, you are fucked if you're 60 years old. Forget it. You cannot play that game. You just you're playing a bunch of you know against a bunch of 17 year old Koreans, and they are going to kick your ass. The girls too. All of them. It doesn't matter. So take a look at esports leagues and teams, and take a look at the guys who win all these tournaments. I mean, I know that I, I actually met an esports guy who I think is 27, and he's like the geezer boy of the group. You know, I think he's 27, and he's as old as I've ever met one. I'm sure my collective fanboy group here, find me a guy who's 30, I'm sure there is one, but I don't know him. Um, but, you know, I had, I had the Optic Gaming team come to my E3 party, and uh, they had to ask me for permission to bring two of their members who weren't 21 yet because my E3 party is a cocktail party and they were like, can they get in or are you gonna get in trouble? Fortunately, we serve a lot of food, so as long as you're serving food, it's considered a restaurant so they can come in. But then I said, well, how old are these guys? And it was like 20, 20, 22, and 23. Like, come on, 18 to 34? You're over the hill at like 25. Um, I encourage one of you guys to look this up because I don't remember the stat, but, but there is some statistic that says for every year you age past 24, you lose some number of milliseconds. I want to say like three milliseconds of reflex. You actually respond that much slower. So 30 years older, you know, let's say it's three milliseconds. If you're 30 years older, it's 90 milliseconds. So if, you, you know, if you're 54 versus 24, it's 90 milliseconds. That's a tenth of a second. I mean, that's a tenth of a second. That means the first tap is you shooting me and the second tap is me trying to shoot you. Guess who's dead, right? So I think it is three, but you guys can look it up. It might be six. It's something ridiculous like that. It's like, oh my God, it, it's like so not fun. And I'm telling you now, I'm there. It's so not fun. I fucking hate multiplayer. I can't do it. They kick my ass. So what I love, and this is when you ask the question, are they gonna make games for this demographic? Co-op, oh my God, is co-op fun. So co-op, here's what you do. I'm standing right to the left, I'm not right to the left, immediately to the left of the best player. And the only thing I'm doing is shooting anybody who's trying to kill him. That's all I did. Now, there were probably 20 characters trying to kill him every three minutes, and I maybe got six of them, but he got the other 14 because he's that good. And the point is, he's so freaking good, nobody tried to kill me, like once every 20 minutes. And when they did, he got them too. So he figured out I was his little pilot fish. I was protecting him. I was keeping the algae off of his back. And so I loved playing that game because I could freaking do whatever I wanted because I had the best player on our team right next to me and nothing ever killed me. So again, if you have slow reflexes, there's a place for you even in that. Now co-op works. You could probably do this in multiplayer too. Certainly you can in Overwatch. You could be like a healer, right? Or what do they call the armored guys? The tank. tank. You can be a tank. God, I tell you, I suck at Overwatch so bad. That's so I played it for like a week. Yeah, you can be a tank, you can be a healer. And those are, and obviously that strategy and for us slow reflex old guys, that's kind of placement and healers kind of have to stay back anyway. And, and it's true in World of Warcraft. I mean, you know, like those kind of games, you can certainly have slow reflexes and thrive. But the fun is being a shooter. It's like getting out there and just freaking taking things out. So again, Call of Duty, like my favorite weapon, sniper rifle, because I want to be as far away from the action as possible and pick guys off. So, you know, that's what I do. But, you know, again, I can't play it. I just, I freaking can't play it. I hate it. 
and it gets worse as you get older. So uh, yes, I think that games will still be made with 18 to 34. The real truth is, as gamers age, it's going to be 18 to 40, then 18 to 45. As esports components come in, I think you're going to get bottom-up designs like Overwatch, where they think it through, and you got to have tanks, you got to have healers. Who are those people? They're the people who aren't good enough to be shooters. I mean, that's really what it is. So you've got to be, you've got to make a game where there's a place for everybody, and Overwatch is actually very well designed for that. Uh, our next question this week from Sifted from Irishman DKG, Irishman DKG. Is there a VR bubble? If so, when will it pop? Um, it hasn't even gotten close. Uh, VR is a real thing, and VR is going to be a real thing for a long time. Um, I think that the reason it feels like a bubble is because it's very expensive right now, and that creates a bubble because very few people are going to do that. Um, PlayStation VR, I think, is going to kind of prove out the concept. And, you know, I don't know how many Sony actually shipped. They said hundreds of thousands of, dollar, of uh, units. I suspect that they shipped 200,000 units globally. Well, they said hundreds of thousands. We know it's not millions. And I think they would have said nearly a million if they shipped 800 or 900,000. They said hundreds of thousands because it's more than 100,000 and fewer than a million. So I'm thinking low hundreds of thousands. If they ship 200,000 with two thirds of PS4s outside the US, they probably literally shipped, you know, 70,000 here. And so that's nothing. I mean, that proves nothing. Um, give it time. The PS4 Pro is going to launch. Christmas is coming, you're going to get a lot more you know, PSVR out there. It's chicken and egg, you know, when you get a lot of PlayStation VR in the installed base, you're going to get a lot more games, the games are going to get better. So I think it'll work, but remember, VR is a platform, it is not just games. You can watch movies in VR, and it's actually a nice experience. I mean, it actually feels like you've got a big screen in front of your face. Um, you ultimately are going to do healthcare, commerce, education with VR. So there's lots of things that I think are gonna prove out the concept. You need the killer app that justifies the big price and then games are gonna work on VR. Don't think of VR as gaming only. Think of VR as gaming first, but lots of other reasons. I think of it that way. So I think it's actually here to stay. Don't think the bubble's gonna pop. Um, it feels like it because the price is too high. The other way it's gonna thrive is if the cost of making the headsets comes down to something you know manageable like 100 bucks, then lots of people are going to do it. So I don't think the, the bubble is going to pop. Our next question this week comes from Sifted from Zero Kaiser. Xbox One did not have a fixed price leading up to the launch of the S. Who takes the hit for hardware price cuts? Doesn't it affect retailers who originally purchased product at the old higher price? That's actually a very good question and it kind of uh, is, it leads me into a discussion of what I do for a living. Um, those of you who think that I get paid to talk about games are crazy. I get paid to talk about how retailers make money on hardware, okay, which is completely different. And those of you who think I'm a stock picker, not my job. My job is to tell you what companies are going to earn. You figure out what they're worth. I don't really care. So the answer is that um, all products sold into retail, blue jeans, you know, butter, everything, has a, a reserve set up by the seller that is protection against the retailer returning the product. And as part of that reserve, because if a retailer orders a bunch of games and they don't sell, they want to return them. If they buy too many shoes, they return them. If they buy too many jeans, they return them. So as part of that, the retailers insist on getting price protection. And what price protection means is if, if the publisher or the manufacturer of the console cuts the price of the console or the game while it's in the channel, then any retailer that bought it at the old price got a discount to the new price. So they get a rebate. So let, let me use games because it's easier. If, if a regular game, let, let's use Mafia, it's a good example actually. So if Mafia comes out at 60 bucks, the retailer paid 48. Let's pretend Mafia sold great the first week, got its reviews, reviews are kind of average, and it stopped selling. So the retailer is sitting, let's just pretend, sitting on 20 copies of Mafia that they paid 48 bucks for. So they paid $960, and they, they decide they want to discount the game down to 40 bucks. And watch, watch sales this holiday. You'll see Mafia for 40 bucks, because there's no way it's going to sell out all those units at full price. So when they discount to 40 bucks, 
they go back to take two and they say, hey, we would have paid you 32 for a $40 game. So, but we paid you 48 and we have 20 copies left that we want to discount. So we want to discount from 48 to 32, $16 on our 20 copies. So uh, 16 times 20, $320 discount. And what Take-Two says is, all right, the next thing you buy from us, we'll give you $320 credit. And that's how they do it. So the retailers are actually protected pretty well. Same with the console, if the price gets cut, if they paid, let's say, because the console uh, uh, margin, the console profit is very low. So on a $300 console, the retailer probably pays $275. Um, but when the console price goes from $300 to $250, they would have paid $225, so they get a $50 break. That's pretty much what happens. So they get that credit from the manufacturer, and the credit will actually come on the next shipment. So the Xbox One S has come in, the retailer will just have a credit of $50 for each box that he had to clear out. Um, so the answer is when the price goes all over the place, the publisher, I'm sorry, the manufacturer typically takes the hit. Um, the retailer can choose to discount, and the only one that I know that does it routinely is Amazon, and they'll put stuff on sale just because they do. Um, but so, for example, if you're a Prime member and you buy a pre ordered game or a brand new release within two weeks, you get $12 off at checkout. So, if you buy the game for uh, 60 at GameStop, you can buy it for 48 on Amazon. You have to be a Prime member to do that. Pretty good deal. Most people don't even know that exists. And yes, if your dad's a Prime member, you buy it on his Amazon account, you can't. But that discount is taken by Amazon. And the reason that they do it in the cart instead of on the screen is because they're not allowed to advertise a price lower than the retail price at 60. They aren't discounting the retail price. They're giving you their profit, which is that 12 bucks. So it's a pretty good deal for gamers, but Pretty much all discounts are borne by the manufacturer or the publisher, except those Amazon discounts. Uh, okay, fellow babies, thanks for joining us. Um, again, we'd like to encourage you to, to consider sifted.net. So we're running a promotion for the month of December. New subscribers get a $10 discount, $40 for the year if you join in December. Um, so 10 bucks off and you get great premium content. You get some pack love in real time. Uh, if you're not a Sifted member and watching on YouTube, thank you for joining us. We love you guys too. We will see you next week.